This is Greg Bufithis, the founder and chairman of Project Council. I'm here in London at the Langham Hotel covering the Georgetown Law Center's Corporate Council Institute Europe. After 14 very successful years in Washington, Georgetown has made the historical move to bring the Institute here to Europe. And I have the good fortune of speaking to the chair of the Institute, Kate Nealon. Uh, Kate, let me ask you this. Uh, you've got here, obviously, a, a very impressive, shall we say, A-list of participants and speakers. Um, and I must say, one of the primary people you have here is John Tyner. How did you get him? Well, um, John was an interesting one because um, if you're going to choose, uh, choose someone to speak who, who has had a regulatory experience, it's probably good to choose someone who's no longer in the job, but who can then add some perspective to the job. And I, in my prior job as general counsel of a large English bank, uh, John was my regulator. And, um, and I think that um, once I started to pursue him to ask if he would speak on this, he has been away from speaking on financial services regulation for a number of years, but has now decided because his own company, Resolution Operations, has just gone, uh, done, floated and become public that he, he was ready to kind of come out. So the timing was good. And, and I was able to doggedly uh, pursue him to the point where uh, he finally said, OK, sure, I'll, I'll come along. And, and kind of was, um, uh, it was a new thing to him, and he thought it would be interesting to, to, to try it. He's familiar with Georgetown and thought it would be a, an interesting experience for him. You've also got a number of other luminaries here. You've got uh, Davidson on this list as well as many others. Is this through connections or how did you do this? Well, oddly enough, uh, a lot of the people you've just mentioned have Kate affiliations. Okay. Uh, and, and in a way, um, and the, actually last, SAB Miller is the company that employs my husband as the head of comp and benefits. Uh, Nick Cooper is at Cable & Wireless, whose board I serve on. And I'm on a board with John Buchanan at, uh, at Cambridge. So it is a lot of personal connections because one of the challenges in doing this was that although there are a number of Georgetown people within the London and European community, it's not that well known. And so it's been a question of all of us using our personal connections, which I think the full European board did, which is what produced this program, which was um, quite exciting, the, the roster we turned up with. We, we were ourselves rather impressed at, at who it finally turned out to be. Corporate counsel, uh, can you tell us briefly how it came about? Well, the Corporate Counsel Institute in the United States was truly the brainchild of Larry Center, who, when he came to start doing legal, uh, continuing legal education, he noticed that there were a couple of organizations out of Chicago, I think in Northwestern and University of Chicago had programs, and Larry just said, this is crazy. The city that should host this is Washington, D.C., and the school that should host this is Georgetown. And that became very well known. And I must say, when this board was constituted three years ago, um, there were a couple of propositions, one of them being the establishment of the Center for Transnational Legal Studies, which most of us prudent board members said, there's no way you're going to do that in 18 months. And uh, Alex Alenikoff managed to pull it off. So once he'd done that, that's the you know, 12, uh, 12 law schools from five continents uh, in central London. Um, you know, CCI Europe looked uh, uh, easy. Uh, but the board was actually formed somewhat naturally in the sense that um, um, little known, I worked with Kevin Connery uh, in the Georgetown Law School um, when I was an undergraduate law student there. So I've known Kevin over 30 years. So when it came to doing a European program, I was a pretty obvious person to be involved in the board. But Kevin and I felt a more proper sounding and looking European, <laughs> a, uh, being American and living in England, it would be better to have some, some people from the continent involved. And uh, we kind of grew it from there. Um, that was kind of how we originally established the, the group. Well, you've had great success these two days in London. Uh, what are your plans for the future of the European Institute? Well, I think we've discovered in doing this first one that there's a great deal of challenge to um, attracting a big audience to this kind of a conference. And I think we would like this to have a distinguishing characteristic. And my vision, and we'll discuss it at our board meeting tomorrow afternoon, right after the conference, would be to have it be one that does move around, which makes it unique. It's also under the aegis of an academic institution, not some um, outfit that just has, has these kinds of conferences. And I must say, coming into this, I sort of thought the next natural home might be Paris because the chair comes from Paris. And you kind of need one of the more senior people on the board resident in the city. It's very difficult to do it um, from afar. But there's been a push by a number of speakers as well as people on the board 
to consider Brussels because of the, the EU governmental aspect. And clearly, this is becoming a slightly different program than CCI US because it has a governmental aspect to it um, a bit more than, you know, in the U US you've got, you know, the federal government here, you've got the EU and you have the OECD and you have the British government and, and lots of the issues about the European Commission. So um, if I had my uh, wish, we would certainly move next year and it would probably be Paris or, or Brussels. There was a thought, should we do it one more year in London to get a little more embedded? But it would be a unique distinguishing aspect if it were one that moved around. So this is really, I mean, Georgetown is the natural place to be because of the various international law programs you have, uh, degree programs and otherwise. Can you give us an overall picture? I think Georgetown Law School developed um, starting in something like 1856, so it's a rather older one, but it was very traditional in the sense that it was a very U.S.-oriented entity. And well before most people, uh, Georgetown started offering, I think it was in the 70s, um, a, an LLM in, in international law and attracted to it uh, foreign lawyers who had been educated and had an undergraduate degree elsewhere. And the the uh, program was rather small in the beginning, but a number of the people on the board, Pascal, Jurgen, many of the people that, that you'll have spoken to today were part of that program. But it was a bit of a fledgling program. And what makes the George Warren one a little unique is the other well-known one is the Harvard uh, degree in comparative law, also a post-undergraduate law degree program and um, certainly the tax programs in both Georgetown and NYU. But I think Georgetown, more than the others, really set out to set up a stake, particularly in Europe. It's expanded since then. And so once the LLM got larger and better known and it became a credential for the European lawyers to have been to that program, they started doing alumni events with each other and then all of the big you know, London firms and US firms and, and country firms tended to have a number of people who have attended it in their programs. And it's sort of grown by leaps and bounds. And so the Center for Transnational Legal Studies was almost the next outgrowth of that. And that is unique. There's no one who has anything like that center. But I do think if you compared it to Harvard's program or many of the other programs, they haven't worked as hard uh, at being international. The prior dean, who's uh, now a UN High Commissioner, Alex Alenikoff, um, had a vision that there would be boards of Georgetown in many areas, so the European was the first. Uh, since then, they've uh, opened an Asian uh, law alumni program, and they're hoping to do one in Latin America. So when you start out by seeing who you have on the ground and the interest level and enthusiasm, then the next step would be some kind of a program of some sort. And so the European one has been a, a real experiment, and this CCI Europe is the first one they've ever done outside the United States. So it's a, you know, it is a sort of. Uh, you know, see how it goes. But uh, I think everyone's been uh, very pleased with, uh, with the success so far, as you say, uh, of the program, of the people who've attended, and the um, speakers and panelists we've been able to attract. Jürgen Heilbach made a reference to his role in the alumni program and networking. Um, didn't tell us a lot about the alumni program. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I think that uh, Jürgen's a good person to address that subject because the people in the LLM have a slightly shorter relationship with Georgetown. It's a one year and plus a summer program as opposed to the three year law degree. And I actually even spent my undergraduate years at Georgetown, as did a number of other people, which is getting up to seven years. And I think Dory Mayer, who helped establish that program, decided it was only going to be as good as the people kept it going after they'd left the program and come back to Europe into practice. So I think that Georgetown realized very early on keeping in contact with the people. And they did some social events, and there's a lot of Georgetown alumni events in Paris and in Madrid where there's a lot of grads. But I think there then became a vision that could the law school establish something slightly different and more substantive that would be benefiting both the individuals but Georgetown itself. And I think this was the brainchild of Alex Lenikoff. He, he wanted to have these European boards and then the various other boards. I am. Um, a vice chair with Jurgen of the European Law Alumni Advisory Board called ELAB. And it started out with about 12 of us, it's now about 25. But I'm the only one um, on the board who actually sits in the UK. It's, it's very much a European board in the continental Europe space. Some Russian, some Eastern European, so it's fairly mixed. And because we have these board meetings um, a couple of times a year, and then we decided having certain projects the first of which was a more international, but the Center for Transnational Legal Studies. But um, we were equally doing this, com uh, doing this program in London was the first um, 
real um, joint venture or um, collaboration, I think I called it in my remarks, between the continuing legal education on main campus in Washington and the corporate council here in, in London. I know being the chair of an institute like this, especially for its launch, can be incredibly hectic as far as schedule. So we sincerely appreciate you taking the time to meet with us and talk about Georgetown. This is Greg Biafidis, chairman and founder of Project Council here at the Georgetown Conference at the Langham Hotel in London.